My name is Max Saltonstall, and I am in need of a new couch. But finding a new couch is not actually that easy, especially when I don't really want to go into a whole bunch of stores. If only there was some way that I could virtually see a whole lot of different couch options. Hmm. I know a guy who works at a company that I think can help us. I'm here with Barry from Markson. Barry, thanks for joining me today. Can you tell me a little bit about what you and Markson do? Hi, Max. Uh, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Markson, and we provide content management systems for 3D products, uh, as well as applications for e-commerce uh, experiences for retailers and brands, specifically products for the home. So if I need a new couch, because I need a new couch, how can Markson help me do that? So Markson provides room planning applications and augmented reality applications and web AR experiences that let consumers come in and design and lay out a new floor plan for their kitchen, for their bedroom, dining room, or living room. And they take 3D products that are the actual products that they can buy uh, from a retailer or from a manufacturer. And they can arrange those products in the space. They can try out different styles. They can switch their wall paint, their flooring, and their lighting, and they can really design uh, their future living space. And then when they're done, they can add all those items to cart and check out on a retailer or a manufacturer's website. So that's what we do is you know bring those uh, room planning and AR experiences to life for the home. That's awesome. So that's gonna be really helpful when I can't just go to a whole bunch of furniture stores, but I wanna know what my options are. Can you walk me through what is the life of, say, one couch as it goes from an idea in some furniture designer's mind to eventually landing in my living room? Where do we start? So it all starts with a content order where we'll work with a client who, let's say, wants to put 3,000 couches with different fabrics, leathers, uh, different um, fit, you know, wood finishes, uh, whatever it happens to be, uh, into their room planning application. So they'll work with us to identify what those SKUs are going to be. and provide us reference materials. Sometimes that's a CAD uh, engineering drawing. Sometimes it's high poly uh, assets that they've used for a photography replacement. Um, sometimes it's just photos. And sometimes it's just a link uh, to their PDP on their website. We'll take those assets and then we'll go through a planning exercise. That planning exercise will identify with the unique set of assets that we need to create to accomplish that order. Um, one of the things about the home space is a lot of the products in a room can share uh, similar materials, uh, can share similar subcomponents. For instance, if you think about a sofa, you're buying the sofa, you have the cushions, you have the feet on the sofa, you have pillows that may be shared across other items in the room, like uh, a love seat, for instance, that's styled in the same collection, right? So we'll identify even subcomponents of those products that can be built once or designed once and then reused multiple times, which really brings down the cost and effort around maintenance or when changes come in for that order. So once that planning exercise is complete, uh, we'll go through a routing exercise through our CMS application. Very cool. So in the very beginning, retailer says, here's my 3,000 couches. Luckily, I only need one couch, but you might need 3,000. Where does that come to? What does it sit in when you absorb that? So the back end of our CMS is a custom relational database uh, that runs on Cloud SQL. And then for the file assets, textures, images, the reference material, uh, 3D meshes, all of those stored are stored in uh, storage, cloud storage. And so the custom application is front-ended by an Angular application that runs on Firebase. So all the artists, the uh, planners, the uh, analytics, all of those uh, users use that 3D workflow application to manage the entire process really from beginning to end. Uh, and then once it's published, those assets end up on a CDN. Great, so assets come in, artists might be making new textures or new models. They're all being listed in the database and, and that's keeping track of how they relate to each other. This is a type of wood or this is a type of linen. And then at some point they need to be combined, right? You need to know that my couch needs to be Naugahyde because that's very important. So how are you doing that combination ahead of time? Because I'm assuming you don't want to do it right out on demand when I'm trying to put that couch in my living room. 
Absolutely. And that's really one of the big lessons we learned early on as our sessions started to scale that this relational database system that we built for building these individual assets uh, is great for management, great for maintenance, uh, great for reusability, and really uh, reduces the effort around that content creation life cycle. But when it comes to consumption, it's really not a great environment uh, to pull all those assets on demand. We even found that in many cases, uh, pulling an individual product because of all the reuse could end up with 50 different queries that need to be run, um, which could really put a large uh, load on a content management system. So what we developed is a compile time um, set of features that would notice whenever an artist had changed one individual you know, component of a product, and then to find all the products that would be affected by that individual change. And then really at compile time, uh, just like you have nightly you know, job services uh, for a DevOps uh, team, would compile and basically build a runtime version of that product that can then be published to CDN at scale. And what's nice about that is then when the end application wants to consume that 3D product, it just downloads that uh, manifest and then pulls all the individual assets it needs to render that uh, without really ever affecting the core content management operation. Cool. So does that mean that you're generating new assets, new composite assets in the cloud storage buckets, tracking the relationship between the, the core pieces and the composites in your database, and then publishing the finished composites to the CDN so that they can be easily pulled down to my laptop or my phone? That's right, and uh, you know we've seen big benefits with that approach. Really, our servers or our applications never go down. They're taking advantage of a lot of cache data that is deployed to CDN. Uh, we even take some of the uh, indexes around product lists and uh, the configuration of our applications and deploy those via SQLite um, so that those can be downloaded um, as little mini databases when the application starts up. So we can reduce the chattiness back and forth through web services um, as a user is experiencing the application. So really, in many of these cases, once they start the application up, until they're ready to save uh, their end uh, room layout, they could run in a completely offline way. And so a lot of the information can be cached and we wait till changes happen to re-download it. So users can come in the, out of the application if no co new content has been published. They're running pr pretty much locally uh, in the browser cache. That sounds like it's gonna make performance for me, the consumer, a lot better, but also, reduce the amount that you have to send over the network. Absolutely, and that's you know really what it's about is kind of pleasing these two different uh, you know, users of this platform. It's around letting the artists produce the most amount of 3D products with the least number of assets, and then be able to respond to changes that come in you know, from the client or from uh, you know, the project team as they're deploying a new application. But at the same time, pleasing the end consumer creating as fast downloads as we can with a minimum num number of assets. And so we can create the best quality rendering experience on the front end uh, for the amount of assets that we're using. And in retail, right, if you're too slow, someone's going to wander away. But also if your systems go down, that downtime is lost money for all of your retailer clients. So how do you make sure that your back end is reliable enough to keep them still selling all the time? It's really about isolating that production environment and consumption environment from the creation environment, you know, where all the assets are built. And by keeping those separate, we don't really have to worry about downtime at all. You know, when new content batches go out, they can be tested uh, through really an A-B testing deployment that we've uh, implemented. And so we never really worry about, you know, downtime when it comes to consuming the assets or using the end applications. Awesome. It sounds like a pretty sophisticated system that's mostly invisible to me as I just get to enjoy virtual couches all over, filling my living room up to the ceiling. That's the hope. It's been about 10 years in building this environment and kind of solving all the different problems that we've seen along the way with making the process more efficient for creation and then also making the process highly optimized for consumption as well. That's awesome. Thank you, Barry, for coming on and for telling us this story about how these virtual sofas can travel through that entire cloud infrastructure to end up in my virtual and hopefully eventually my physical living room. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Max. It's been great. Wow. So now I get how all those virtual couches ended up all over my living room. Oh, I guess I have to pick one now, huh? Well, I'm really glad that 
Barry was able to explain how Markscent is using all these different pieces of Google Cloud to power this super cool retail experience from home. If you want to learn more about what they've done and what many others have done on Google Cloud, click on the link below to see the rest of Architecting Cloud Solutions. Thanks for watching.